setup. If IG are able to get the Chronosphere and the Skywrath Mage Ultimate down, the Mystic Flare, oh, the lasers from the sky, for then, then you might see a different type of game. Then IG is the ones being aggressive. They're able to blow up a hero instantly. Then they begin the fight. But if LGD, they're able to get the Centaur Stomp or an Arrow or some side of uh, Moonlight Shadow Initiation, then you'll see somebody else go down on the IG squad and they might be the ones pressed out. Indeed. Let's just have a look at the Radiant base here. Uh, the base is, in fact, the, the, most of the map is mirrored on, on either side. So this is the Radiant base. This is their ancient. They've got to defend that at all costs. There it is looking beautiful. Uh, they have these structures here. These are called towers. These sort of tall, oh. slightly floating. Uh, I didn't draw that line. That was Blitz. The, I, uh, these are the barracks here. This is just three circles. It looks like Mickey Mouse. There's no problem there. No these way. are three circles. Okay, these are the barracks. These are the buildings you want to destroy to weaken the enemy creeps. We'll see the creeps in about 33 30 seconds. seconds. These towers to here will shoot enemies that come in an area radius like this. Destroying enemy towers gives you gold. You have to destroy them in sequence, starting with the first you're going to destroy this tier, the tier 1 tower, then the tier 2 tower, then the tier 3, and the tier 4, and then you can go for the ancient. The lanes, as we call them, this is like a pathway between your base and the enemies. As you can see, it extends all the way up here to the middle, across this river, which represents the sort of middle uh, DMZ of the map. The battle uh, your, begins. your creeps will go this way, their creeps will go that way, and they'll roughly meet in the middle. Um, and the creeps have spawned. Let's go have a look at what the little creeps look like. If you look at YYF, who is being, playing the Bristleback, he's just standing next to those guys. The guys with the green health bars are the Radiant Creeps, and the guys with the red health bars up here on the Ember Spirit um, are the Dire Creeps, and they will meet in the middle here. You'll see the Clash of Battles shall soon be joined, and the Creeps will uh, fight each other endlessly, and your job as the hero is to sort of turn the tide of battle, take care of the enemy heroes, and uh, help your Creeps to push into the enemy base. Oh, that was this 45, is... by the way, was money, but coming around the back here, Yao. The arrow uh, hits. Try. This is the double mid gank early on. This is crazy. DD gets a stun off on Faith. Um, and they're all going to disengage. What happened there was both teams had two support heroes come around and try to gank the opposing oh, mid hero. And they both did it at the same time. They all bumped into each other. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it all sort of it ended with nobody dying. Like, gentlemen, see you later. Nice. <laughs> they all just kind of walked away. But if that arrow didn't hit from Morana there, from DDC, they the uh, Ember Spirit definitely would have died, I think. And he's going to play a little bit far back. He's got uh, YYF mid playing the spike. He's got support. Lin at this bottom lane, though, he's got a huge advantage. The, the Faceless Void can't actually do anything against this Viper. There's way too much damage going to come out on him. And if you notice, he's zoning him completely out of the lane. Ferrari yeah. just going to try to survive in this lane. And meanwhile, at top, the Invoker, he's actually mm -hmm. playing the long lane, which is something it's we very don't interesting. really see yeah, very really often. Don't. Blitz, can, can you just explain what... I know we go over this every game, but just, just cover the, the why heroes play certain lanes. Of course. For uh, Actually, if we just take a look at middle, though, first DDC, he's going to get Sunstrike, but it's a low level, so he might not go down quite yet. Oh. I think he's getting quite low. Chuan, maybe one Dyer's more hit. Oh. And he's got the Arcane Bolt. Is it enough damage? Oh. Yes, he's going to go down. IG and managed to draw first blood, giving them more gold the for the first kill of the game. Sire Again, Chuan, though, the playmaker yeah. of the team, like, really... This yeah. is the thing, when, when you think about playing uh, Dota, a lot of people think, oh, I don't like to play support, you know, oh, you just go around and do boring stuff, and oh, you just put wards down, and you buy the courier. Chuan would Radiant's show middle you tower that the, game, the last game in particular was won because of his support play. Vengeful Spirit just ran into Roshan and, and died. Oh. oh, because he didn't want to waste time, he was out of mana, so he, he was completely out. So what he did was, he spent all his money, and when you die, you lose money. But it's also, when you're a low level, you respawn really quickly. He respawned in, what, like six seconds or something like that? Yeah. yeah. And it takes, oh, a lo smart. it takes a long time. It'll take, what, 25 seconds, 30 seconds to get back to base? Walk back to base, wait for your health to exactly. regen. Exactly. Interesting. I've never done that. Next time I died at neutrals, that's what I was doing, Shane. Okay. okay. Um, Yao here in the mid uh, as Ember Spirit. What is Tran doing here? Is he hoping to snipe the courier? I I think that's definitely what he's trying to do, or maybe just wrap around, maybe set up a kill. The scouting but, as well. Yeah, and as I was talking about though, what IG did is they long lane this invoker. The reason why you don't see this hero in this lane very often is because the distance from the tower to the lane is really, really big. And so you don't want to get caught in a situation where somebody can circle around you, and that's why being in this lane here at bottom is so important because if you notice where Ferrari's farming from, he's actually right next to the tower, so there's nothing for him to worry about. Yeah, because that tower at low level 
your opponent won't be able to tank the damage from it. It'll it'll be too great. It hits, as you can see, for 110. But see those those glowing sort of shots of fire. Look how quickly they're firing. 110 damage at a time. And if you look at Lin, he only has 600 health. Yeah. So two or three tower shots, he's lost half his health. But Ferrari actually hasn't learned time walk, which seems kind of like that's his main escape mechanism. Is that because he doesn't fear the way LGD are playing, or why, why is that, Blitz? I, I don't. I think the biggest thing is that. Ferrari just isn't too afraid, and he's saying, okay, I'm never going to jump on this Viper, but at the same time, he's never going to be able to kill me. I have too much health, too much damage, and out at oh. top, Rabbit playing the Centaur. He's going to get jumped on, but Faith manages to stun himself. He's dipping quite low. The arrow to follow as well, but it misses. The Centaur stop and the double edge. That's going to clean him up. A lot of burst damage comes down. It's 2-1, to one, still in favor of IG, but as I was talking about, Void, he's just not very afraid because of the ability to backtrack. Backtrack is something where... He takes damage and then he says, he shrugs it off. He's like, he okay. Just, you'll see him sort of wibble a bit yeah, like the yeah. Matrix. Yeah, he's like, it's exactly uh, like I don't Matrix want to take system. any damage. I'm just going to back out of here, see you guys later. And time walk, so he doesn't need to skill it quite yet. It's not going to really well, help him in this lane too much. He landed. Oh, well, now, well, now in he the did. Matrix, they called it bullet time, not Bu wibbling. It would have been a bit bad. Wibble wobble. If you bump into an agent, he might wibble. It doesn't sound as good as bullet time. Oh, trouble top. She gets caught out by DD with a stun. And DDC following oh, up on the Mirana okay. with an arrow. There it is, one more attack. Oh, okay, so what DD, the Ventral Sphere player, did there was he put his body on front of Invoker. And when there's a unit in front of you, like like when they start the game, they block the creep. Yeah. You can't actually pass it. So the. Yeah, oh, that was body unbelievable. Block, yeah. Body blocking is what we call it. Yeah, it's an amazing play. It's really difficult to do when not an AI player. Yeah. Like. IG, their supports are just kind of backed up. They've both been spotted. Both of their supports want to play as aggressively as possible. As we said, heroes like Skyrath, heroes like Mirana, they're on the opposite teams, but both are heroes that don't really benefit from just kind of sitting around and farming and getting levels. You need to be aggressive on the map with them. Look at this, look at Rabbit. He oh. already has his Tranquil Boots, which is his upgraded boots. Trouble there, Miss Boy, I think he's going to be okay. Out. In his bottom, he just gets stunned out. Is he going to go down? He's dipping quite low. Yes, he does. Are able to get the, the time lock on him? Going to pick him off as well. What you were saying about, again. about shutting down Centaur, Shane. He's already over halfway to his blink dagger. Yeah. He's already upgraded Dyer's his boots. I don't think we've mentioned boots. Attack. If you look at everybody's boots, different heroes will have different boots. Different boots do different things. Your basic brown boots just makes you run a bit quicker. But you also have all these other kind of boots. You got. Oh, I don't, the way it pops up and tells yeah. you someone's well, there's boots of travel, which lets you teleport to, to any friendly unit or structure on the map. You've got phase boots, which gives you a bit of damage, makes you run quicker. And uh, and you also have power treads, which gives you movement speed like all boots do. And some increased stats. Arcane boots gives you more mana to spend on spells. And tranquil boots, as long as you're not being attacked or hitting people for a little while, you get to regain some health. And they, of course, they give you extra move speed. So Centaur has a spell on trouble mid. Sunstrike is gonna miss. Why we have look? There you go. With his back to the enemy, he is so hard to kill. And uh, DD on the Ventral Spirit, desperately trying to get away, very low on health. He's Ooh. going to escape, and the Ember might turn it around here. Can he catch up to Chuan? No, Chuan escapes very low. These are, br these are brutal early exchanges. Look how low everybody is in health after every fight. Yeah. Really, really tough. The drawn out fights really favor Bristleback. With, with that tank ability, with the, the Bristleback, it's actually called. It's the same as Doom. They just called it the same name as the spell. It's just kind of lazy. <laughs> it's just <laughs> lazy valve. Lazy, lazy valve. valve. <laughs> Known for it, aren't they? Crazy <laughs> so LGD, please yep. don't fire us. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know they're listening. We love you guys. Not we love you, lazy bastards. So LGD, just they're just kind of throwing blows left and right. Um, nobody really getting too far ahead of each other. If we just take a look at the gold graph really quickly, slightly in favor of LGD, these exchanges and the experience graph. Just being that was actually just almost entirely getting the bristleback kill. That's a core hero that you wanted to take down. He's got a lot of levels. A lot of people. They want to kill the easiest hero to go for, like a lower level hero. But if you're getting a lower level hero, you're getting less experience from it. This is seven and a half minute blink dagger on Rabbit. But That's the thing. The second he gets that blink dagger, he's going to leave the lane and he's going to roam around the map. And all of a sudden they have an open lane for the Viper to farm or for maybe the, the Ember Spirit to farm. So it opens up so much space. And by roaming around, you kill people and cause them to ro like react to you instead of them re like trying to come on. I just wanted to say why Tranquil Boots are important on Centaur and why they're something that people 
people get. His skill double edge does damage to himself as well as the enemy. Dyer's so he needs to think about health attack. regen. He likes to go in and out of fights. He likes to be all over the map. If he had to continually worry about regening his health, he wouldn't be as powerful a hero. So he gets those tranquil boots, Radiant's makes him run quicker, and it gives him that health attack. regen. So he can get in, use his double edge, take some damage to himself. But because he's so good at bursting down enemies, oh, uh, um, he can even the blink dagger though. There it is. Oh. Ferrari, a little bit of a but Beautiful. it doesn't matter. A lot of damage. That stun from Didi, that range stun from Vengeful Spirit, so good at, uh, at ganks. It's only a 10 second cooldown, and it does a good chunk of damage too. So I, th I think Vengeful Spirit stun is, is fantastic. And these players Radiant's as well, they know the exact durations attack. of the stuns. So they don't, like, all throw their stuns at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Venge. DD, he waited until the, the duration of the center stone was nearly finished and then used the stone straight away after that. It was really, yeah, really cool. a lot of damage. Made. This is a matchup that I think actually favors the Bristle back end. As we see, YYF farming quite well. 45 CS on him, just 36 on uh, on uh, the Ember Spirit. So not doing the best, but he does have a kill over him. And IG, they really need to get aggressive here. And as I say that, oh. they're smoked up this two. They're going to catch up this Ventral Spirit. Here comes the Chrono Spear. Everything's going to land on her. She's going to go down for free. Venge goes down, but is this the counter gank? The Centaur is available. He's actually going to get stunned in place. Everybody collapsing on him. LGD retreating. The Ember Spirit did teleport up here, but not able to accomplish anything. The Centaur kind of walks into his death. Didn't anticipate the Bristleback being there as well. Good rotation by YYF. Every the, the way he froze in mid-animation, that's the, the, the bash, if you want to call it that, from Faceless Void, where he sort of freezes you in time for a second, and he wasn't able to get his spells up. So YYF had a haste rune there. That's why he was running so quickly. So every two minutes uh, here, yeah, I'll try and draw on it. And there you go. Here. Did I, did I draw there? Yeah. You got it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, a rune spawns every two minutes, and this one's a double damage rune, so it increases your damage by 100%. And there's, I think, five different runes? We think haste, regen, invis, invis. illusion, Radiance bottom and tower double damage. Is under yeah. attack. So it's very important to have control over that t them sides of the map and them areas Radiance at, at, structures at the are two fortified. minute uh, marks. Radiance bottom LGD tower grouped up his five. Attack. Looks like they just want to push this tower down. Doing a lot of damage to it right now. Viper's just kind of leading the way. They don't have a mechanism up. That's the heal bomb item we were talking about. Just heals your uh, entire team for 250. LGD, it looks like, or IG look like they're quite close to it. And yeah, YYF has it for himself. Radiance and so bottom team tower. fights until Radiance they're able to pick up one of their own. Should go in their favor. But Ferrari playing the faceless void. He's going to go for the hand of Midas, it looks like. And he's actually quite far away from it. And he's been he's been really struggling this game. Only 1-1-2. I, one, think, one I and think that's two. a mistake. I really do. I well, think Maelstrom... I, I, yeah, it could be. By the time he's going to go for the hand of Midas, he's only got 200 gold. What's down Maelstrom? Oh, it's the item that just kind of shoots lightning. It, uh, it's the lightning a, stick. Yeah, the lightning stick. It just does some damage. Has the ability to proc some lightning out. So okay. you'll sort of see a chain lightning between things. It's uh, it helps with his farm, and it's, so he can. Because uh, you know the way we were talking earlier about uh, lane equilibrium, we call it. So you don't want the lane to push too far. You want to farm in safety. As the game goes attack. on, you become more interested in Dyer's just flash farm. You have far less time attack. to just sit around in lane. You want to just quickly kill creeps and get the heck out. Something like a Maelstrom, you can turn it into a, an item called a Mjolnir. That attack. gives you uh, even Dyer's more damage. But what it does is, is it attack. allows you to kill a lot of creeps very quickly. So you can farm much more quickly. The later items you, you tend to get on heroes like Faces Void are really expensive. Thousands and thousands of gold. So you need to be able to acquire a lot of gold very, very quickly. Yeah, the way IG play um, Faces Void as well. Like Ferrari, it doesn't really seem like his kind of hero, does it? Like. It, I always see Ferrari playing Radiant's the really, really technical heroes, the really attack. difficult ones. And, and Faces Void just doesn't, it doesn't seem like that for me. Yeah, I think it was just kind of a strategy that they concocted with YYF in the middle, middle lane here. He's not a bad player attack. at all. Ooh. You see the stampede Radiant's come, but the time walk travels. Attack. If you just look at the screen line from where his center so is, big. that's how far he can get away instantly. It's not going to be enough. This is the, the trouble he going to have, by the way. The silence from uh, Skyrim is very long ranged. It's instant for, as well. Yeah, it gives a chance for other people to, to jump in on him. But it's one of the reasons when you're playing as Ember Spirit, you like to ban Doom. Dyer's the Ferrari is a big trouble up here. Get stuck. Here There's comes the, the arrow as well. Beautiful. Such a great setup. 
But they are really making life miserable for him. I think that was way too greedy for him. He knew that he just got jumped on, and they're like, yeah. and he's like, well, maybe they won't try this again. And, <laughs> and he just kind of stood there. And IG playing a really greedy style in general. She playing the Invoker. He's picked up a hand of Midas. We've talked about this item a lot, and you're going to see it a lot. It's a super greedy item. It doesn't actually give you anything, but every 100 seconds, you can use it on a creep. None of the ancients, but just any of these big creeps, and it gives you more experience and more gold than a normal uh, creep would. And Lid, he's gonna get caught on the top. There comes the silence as well. He's quite tanky. He still has a magic stick, which he should pop right now. He's gonna be able to get away. His team coming in as well. Look at how much damage Chuan has done to himself just with the corrosive skin wow. ability. Compare that to what Invoker has. So he, he has like a thousand life, and he has the corrosive skin that makes him tankier. And then Invoker just has. It's 850 life and then like very few defensive abilities. The says. magic stick that the Blitz mentioned there, mm. if you just mouse over the magic oh, yeah, stick on Viper that's there. That's a good call. What it does is it, it saves up charges. When someone uses a spell uh, near you, an enemy uses a spell, it adds a charge. So each attack. one gives you 15 health and mana back. That may not sound like much, but it can be absolutely huge. It's like a miniature mech. Once yeah, you near half a mechanism, yeah. Yeah, it's like boom, there you go, a bunch of health. Um, I think it's probably the best item in the game. I think a lot of people generally consider it to be the best item in the game. Because it's so for cheap. its cost and for its utility, absolutely. Dyer's top tower has LGD been denied. denying the tower at top. That's the first tower down, but it is denied. Denying something means that you deny Dyer's some resources to the other team, and so you do still get gold, but it's, it's essentially halved. And if you times that by five, you're losing quite a bit of gold. And the LGD, they've pressured already one tower here. The tower mid is getting quite low. The tower top, it's got about half HP. And L this is exactly what LGD need to do. They need to safely push down towers. They need to deny experience from Chuan and the Alchemist here from getting a lot of experience and just getting their Mirana and their Ventral Spirits and levels and getting this Ember Spirit as farmed as they can. Yeah. So, um, was it Lin playing the, the Centaur in the first game? Uh, yes. Yes. I believe so. And now it's Robert playing in, in this game, and he yeah, seems he to be a, Razor in the first. Yeah, game. he seems to be a lot more defensive in his play. Like where? I think they. I just think they have to be careful. I mean, who? You know, who are they going to jump on? Basically, unless he finds a Skyrath. Invoker. It's either him or Invoker. Invoker is mid, and he's got Skyrath with him. I think they could probably kill Alchemist they as well. Possibly could. If they can stun him, I guess, before he gets yeah. his ultimate. But, but Void and Bristleback are really, really beefy tanky. Yeah, heroes. it's tricky. The beefos. The beefos. <laughs> Watch those gains, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and LGD just kind of sitting behind each other, not really sure what to do. Ferrari farming this uh, creep wave out. He doesn't have a lot of money. The last time he clicked on his hero, he only had 200 gold, and that had him been at least three or four minutes yeah, yeah. ago. And since then, he's Radiant's only managed to farm up 600. Not going to be a huge impact, but Void, he still has the Chronosphere. That's what they're going to look for. A big Chronosphere can still turn things around for him. The only thing is, Chronosphere doesn't add damage. Radiant's it makes the Time Walk ability do a little attack. bit more, but the Chronosphere itself doesn't really do damage. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't make you like a huge damage dealer. Yeah, uh, that's why he needs items. I that's think it allows his team to do more damage. Exactly, and yeah. so if you're able to hit a big Chrono, you can still be useful. Yeah. That's why, I mean, I think it's a good combo with Skyrath Mage and Invoker. It, you know, it, it, it makes their stuns or their, their ults like a dot. Yeah. Basically, just say, well, he's standing still. How can I miss? Yeah. But, but the Faceless Void himself, I think a big part of it has to be the ability for Void to Chronosphere and be certain of getting a kill yeah, while the definitely. Chronosphere is up. If he can't get that, he is kind of... He's not as powerful as he could I be. I think he so. should roam around with Chuan and use that Skywrath made Mystic Flare, like, just with uh, with the Sunstrike on top. Yeah. But they could kill anyone in the game with that he's combo. He's taking a chance pushing up this far. I, I, I mean, he's been ganked twice in this location. I think he, I think he should be careful. Yeah, but, hey, he's, under, he's under the impression that he has to risk it to get the biscuit, he I think. He doesn't necessarily need to risk it for the biscuit. As you said. I said get the biscuit. The, to get the biscuit. Yeah, you want to get the biscuit. You'd... Yeah, risk it to get the Is biscuit. Is this like an English saying that I'm not... Do you like biscuits? No. Oh, well then, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't risk it. It'd be like more like risk it for a plate of fries, but that doesn't sound as good, I guess. And that top, able to catch Yao. There's the mystic flare, but he... And Faith actually stuns himself in the middle of a tower and a bunch Dyer's of heroes teleporting in. But attack. still, an Ember Spirit, who's Dyer's a core hero for a support alchemist, who's only level 8, isn't too bad. Could be worse. That's what Shane was talking about. That Mystic Flare with the Chronosphere setup, although the Chronosphere doesn't do a lot, it's able to knock you down. And in mid, YYF, he's going to get stunned down. The arrow oh, connected so on him as well, but he's not going to go down yet. The double edge from Rabbit, though, is able to take him down. The Centaur picking him off clean. And that's two kills now in a row for LGD. 
Looks like they're just going to push for this mid objective yeah. now too. You know, a, a big part of that just then was a really smart Radiance play from DD. Tower he knew Rabbit attack. was coming in from the Radiance north, as it were, and he also fortified. thought, well, if I swap Bristle to here, he'll have to eat some tower shots as well. Yeah. So just stack the damage on him, put him near the tower, put him nearer to Rabbit, and he wasn't able to get away. Yeah. Three tower for LGD. That's another one for them. Only one remaining outer tower for uh, IG and two remaining two for LGD. And two denied. This will actually be. Yep. That's a free. Dyer's that's a tower, tower down, and it's been, been denied, denied for uh, bottom IG and is under Ferrari. Just continuing to farm up here. I feel like uh, LGD should know about this. Like, yeah. I, okay, they're pinging out. They're saying like, "Yo, no, he's been here this entire time." Let's stop this guy. He's actually abandoned the Honda Modus. Like, yeah, he's going for a, a mask. Yeah, at, at a certain stage, I do the same. Like, I'm just like, okay, let's just get like cheaper, more easier items to acquire. Like, a mask of madness is an effective Dyer's item yeah. that doesn't cost that attack. much, and it's it's built up in stages as well. That they what cost. What does it do, Shane? It basically increases your attack speed and also increases the amount of damage that you take. It's a risky item, but it's it's like. Uh, but sometimes one must risk it to risk. get the, the biscuit. biscuit. That's one my must boy. risk it to get the plate of fries. <laughs> the old singing goes. <laughs> but DD, he's invisible right now. I think he was just trying to see if he could break out any smokes or if he could Ooh. find anybody on the map. He's gonna stop this stack from happening. Okay. Not accomplishing a whole lot though in terms of getting levels or farm. Yao, meanwhile, he's getting a little bit more farmed progressively. Lin finally picked up the mechanism, and he's got a point booster as well. The way that you want to build Viper is because of his natural abilities, the Nether Toxin, the Poison Attack, and the Viper Strike. They're all really offensive, so you just have to build yourself as tanky as possible. That's where your real damage is going to come in. The ability to stay alive and continuously dish out little bits of damage. Yeah, when we said he was actually blocking the camp, basically the camp respawns every minute, and if there's a unit in it, it won't respawn. But what you can do is you can attack the creeps and drag them out to trick the game into thinking that there's no units there and it'll respawn. But the Vengeful Spirit was actually invisible and you used his own body to block the camp. I just want to quickly talk about something I saw some people talking about in chat. Mm -hmm. uh, this was between games two and three. People were saying, are the roles similar to, say, in an MMO where you have a tank and a healer and a nuke or stuff like that? They're not quite the same. You don't have... Because you're fighting other people. If you're fighting against a computer, you can do things like aggro control and stuff like yeah. that. And you can say, I'll build as a tank and I'll aggro the creeps and I'll tank those while you do other things. You can do that sometimes when you're farming neutrals. You can have one person stand there and tank. The, like, for instance, here is Centaur standing there tanking Roshan. It's like a little like MMO, Roshan. yeah. yeah but it's, so the Centaur is standing there and he's letting Roshan hit him and take the damage while the weaker heroes stand behind. But it's not like an MMO where you have those ultra-defined roles. You can't guarantee that the you enemy team will focus you down. You're kind of have an initiator, though. You, you kind of have you a do DPS. Have you do have yeah. But it's not the names of the roles are just kind of different. Yeah, yeah. and, and each, um, each character can kind of do a little bit of everything. Like, there's very few characters that can only do, like, yeah. specifically one thing. And like, wow, it, it, it's far more rigid, you, yeah, you know, yeah. as an example of an MMO where you have those roles. Did you ever play World of Warcraft, Ted? I did, dude, yeah. I played it for from launch for a few years, and uh, I mean, it was the first MMO I'd ever played. At you the know, time, it was like, this is incredible, and now I, I'm like, well, I'd rather play Dota. I knew, like, for a fact that I should never play it, because oh, I have quite dude. an addictive personality. Oh, dude, it would have melted you. You would have just disappeared. Like, I played another game for, like, a three months straight, and I, I said to Ted I was sick or something. I was like, yeah, what did I say? I made up some excuse. Uh, oh, God, I can't remember. You did make an excuse, yeah. and it turned out you were playing that other game. Again. The thing about Dota, though, is the high replayability always makes you come back. Like, like there's like only six. one map. I tried to explain this to my friends, and yeah. he was like, what are you talking about? There's only one map. That was actually one of the hardest things for me to grow yeah. when my friend told me about the map. I was like, what about on a different round or a different map? And yeah, think of any other game where there's just one. Yeah, imagine playing the same Counter-Strike map oh, go again and again. You I've, seen this thing, I've seen this exact same setup for six years of my life, and I'm still <laughs> playing it. That tells you something. Yeah. But LGD looks like they're going to get initiated on the void, gonna throw the Chronos here, looking for anybody. He's not even doing any damage during this Rabbit, gonna pop the Black King Bar. He's immune to uh, any sort of magic damage. He's just gonna go in. Ferrari playing the face of Void, he gets blown up. IG trying to split their heroes up. They're gonna try to neutralize Faith, who's running away from his teammate, so nobody else gets picked off. They did manage, were they actually able yeah, to get the Aegis to the Immortal? Yeah, yes. First During that time, they were able to get it, so I guess that Kronos here was more of a space creator, yeah. but still two more kills picked up for LGD. Did did uh, Ferrari playing the Faces Void actually think the Remnant was Emersphere? Because I did. I, mean, I, I, I think, yeah, for, I think for half a second. He ran at it. He ran the wrong way. Didn't and then turned and around. Yeah, because yeah. he was like, oh crap, that's not even a hero. Yeah. And if we look at the experience graph, just 
barely in favor, actually. Only 1,000 This is a really favor. close game. Yeah, and I, the gold difference is only 3k. Not too big at all for either team to... Uh, that's overcome. like one big team fight. Exactly, and that one big team fight, though, if that happens again, if the Chronosphere only flies on the Viper, that's not the target you want to go for. Yeah, absolutely. You want to catch the Ember Spirit, who doesn't have a lot of health, yeah. doesn't have a lot of armor, and should go down quickly. The Viper, if you notice the way he played, you might think, oh, he was completely out of position. No, he wants to be the person in the front soaking up the damage. All right. By the way, if anyone out there wants to give me a Golden Rush, Oh, you, I'll take it. I wouldn't mind one either. <laughs> Are you guys really selling yourselves out? I'm not yeah, I'm, I'm a seller. I'm not for it. I yeah. want it. I'll sell it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Animal. I hear Hoppet going. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So did Scriff, up. actually. Oh, no. He? No, he has the, the golden thing itself. He has the golden figure. Yeah, golden, I don't, don't know what that courier. means. I want the golden courier. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We should uh, just mention, by the way, all these what we call cosmetic items. If you, know, you may have noticed that certain heroes look different game to game. That's like because, have an Invoker, for Yeah, example. like Invoker, for instance. You can buy uh, sets that change go the appearance to Invoker, of the character. Don't look at Viper, the one that doesn't have cosmetic effects. <laughs> you can change the look of the hero in the game, but it doesn't change their effects. So you can, uh, you know, have all this funky stuff, but it's not like if you spend a million bucks on the game, all of a sudden your hero is Dyer's better. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah, it's the best thing about Dota by far. Yeah, you know the Mirana arrow? I was always wondering, there's actually an animation that makes it look a lot slower and bigger. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about? Yeah, the one and the reason for that is actually because they said, okay, if there's going to be a cosmetic effect to it, we have to make it worse than the original. Okay, because if yeah. it makes it any different or better, then people would just use that and they would break the game. Do you know what DreamHack? Loda actually never seen that cosmetic before and thought it was a wisp tether. Oh, oh, wow, yeah, really? Yeah. That, uh, that's why they have to be careful with the spell effect changes. Yeah, like they really. change um, the hero appearances quite often, but in terms of spell effects, you become so attuned to recognizing what they are. Yeah, it's like that, second nature. Yeah, yeah, that eventually, if you change them all, it would be like, well, I can't keep up with this. So. Yeah, Ember Spirit, just able to farm this neutral creep camp up. Like we talked about, the Slight of Fist hits everything in that area. And he does have the Battle Fury, which allows him to hit multiple targets if they're next to each other. So like, Ember Spirit is a really good flash farmer for these neutral creeps. Actually, if you look at the top of the screen under their logos, they have these like huge numbers. Basically, that has nothing to do with the game at all. It's just uh, you can buy pennants to support your team, and that's the amount of pennants that are in the game supporting the team. Yeah, I just kind of crushing in that regard. Could be a big fight here. Oh, and the Viper Strike, it's going to fly on Ferrari. Fate gets stunned by the arrow from Murata. He's going to go down. Alchemist is down first. Everything going on the Viper, but he's still alive. He's he has the mech as well. He's going to pop it. Is he going to be able to get out the Centaur? Stampede has popped as well. Radiant's Everyone's invisible. He's going to actually make it out alive. Oh my God. Unbelievable. The Alchemist was picked off, though. And Ooh. now the counter initiation. The Centaur coming yeah. in with the stun. And another arrow connects onto the Skyrath Mage. Are tower. they just going to let him out? Attack. YYF playing the Bristleback. He's getting quite low. Everyone from IG is about a half or less. They have to disengage. Dyer's and wow, that was huge for LGD. Yeah. Picking up a free kill. All five heroes were there. And they lit everything they up. They used everything on this Viper. And we talked about the Corrosive skin was enough to keep him alive. That damage that he sustained right there. I mean, he doesn't even have a BKB. Think no. about that. When he gets a BKB, but we call it a BKB, it's a Black King bar item. It's Very Centaur important has it. item. Centaur has one. When you saw that golden glow around him, it makes him immune to magical damage and stuns. For someone like Viper, who's already hard enough to kill, I mean, geez, that it just makes him almost impossible. Yeah, you want people when you when you use uh, the BKB, it, you're gonna see this like giant glowing animation. You want people to go on you at that point yeah. because there's nothing they can do. You shrug off spells. You're like Optimus Prime. Yeah. That's the coolest guy I know. So that's and the you example I chose. You know to use. Optimus Prime? I know Optimus Prime. I've seen. Oh. Re I've supported him. Okay. I, you mean you know him though? Yeah, I mean I've bought like I've seen four. No, of his I think movies. Shane's implying that you know him on a personal level. Yeah, we. I mean, he calls me Will. I really? call him Op. Op. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Don't believe it, to be honest. Call him Prime. I can call him right now. Yeah, what's up, Prime? Call him up. Go on, then get him on the phone. How would he answer the phone? Right They're tiny, tiny and he's huge. He's he crush has a big it. phone, obviously. Yeah, it's to scale. He gets one of the other ones that turns Why are we making this, this? Oh, okay. This joke makes no sense. It's, like, it's, it's just become absurd. <laughs> You're right, you hate that. I hate absurdity, but the Viper Strike gonna go on the <laughs> He does have the Aghanim Scepter. That allows him to continuously cast his Viper Strike, and it increases oh the range. 
the cooldown actually goes down. It's only 12 seconds, and so he can just use it like at least two or three times in the fight. We see the little necro Radiant's creeps from Exile here, the invoker denied. player. He seems like if you kill them necro creeps, you actually get 200 gold. Yeah, he's been chucking them away. I've seen it in the last like two or three minutes. They've died like four times. Is, is that like... What's he trying to do with it? What's he I mean, to... he's trying to use it to scout, and LGD is committing hard for them. So I guess he thinks it's an okay trade. Okay. But if he's not able to scout anything important, it's not going to be very useful. He, he, I saw him use the mana burn from the creeps on the Ventral, and actually took all of Ventral Spirit's mana. Oh, and actually, Lin, again, the Viper, he's not going to be the target they want to go on, though. Are they going to be able to bring him down? He's actually still got the mechanism up. Oh, and he's getting quite low, and they are no, and he gets swapped at the last second, but he finally goes down. Ventral Spirit might take a fall as well, but the Void and the Alchemist have already been blown oh up. God. That's another hero down for IG, only two are left alive, and they're going to run away. Alchemist, Void, and the Skyrath Mage going to go down only for the Viper. Arrow! Oh, just dodged by YYM. You see, you see the weakness of Faceless Void there with the Chronosphere, because the Bristleback is a melee hero that he has to try and get into the Chronosphere, but obviously you have to place the Chronosphere so perfectly yeah. so he's able to That's hit That's a really good point. IG only have Dyer's two range yeah. heroes, so the amount of damage attack. that can contribute to that Chronosphere is really limited, but I feel like even bigger than that, what's really hurting them in these fights is that they keep initiating on Viper. Yeah. Yao is doing a really good job. Ember Spirit's a glass cannon. You want him to stay alive as many times as you can just to cast these Sleight of Fist over and over yeah, again. Yeah, just in the back casting spells. Yeah, and, and he's been doing a really good job of that. While, whereas Lin's like, okay, go for me, bros. Hit me. <laughs> I mean, they killed him, but it took everything. Yeah, he's that guy, you know, that's screaming after like a night of drinking. He's like, hit me. I don't know that guy. Really? I that's... don't hang around with them kind of people. I don't deal with an absurdity yeah. split. That's, that's happened to me so many times in college. Yeah, you've got that crazy oh, guy. Oh, he wants you to test Yeah, man, he's like, hit me, dude. I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna do that. Like, if he you, wants you to hit him because yeah, if you fight me, fists, I'm like, I'm so small, yeah. <laughs> People don't know, but I have smaller hands than my girlfriend. It's incredibly emasculating. Call me Baby Hands Blitz. <laughs> baby Hands. It's like the worst boxer's nickname ever. BHB. And in the red corner, Baby Hands. I feel like I wouldn't be a boxer if I had Baby Hands. Well, exactly. Like, that would work. They're more incredibly accurate, though. No, they're Are not. They you can get them up, up, up the nose, I don't know. Up the nose. Gets him with the nostril shot. His patented nostril shot. That's, that's the game changer. I can't get it out. <laughs> His eyes are watering, he's sneezing now. The nostril shot. All of our jokes are so absurd. Yeah, man. This, like, really freaks me out. All right, LGD, we're going to get back to the game. <laughs> Viper just gets a little bit tankier. He gets a Vitality Booster. It builds into a, a Heart of Tarrasque, which is... It gives you raw HP, and that's what he's going to go for. And if he gets this, there's yeah. no way they're going to kill him. They're just, he's, just, he's just saying, like, okay, I died that last fight, but this time. Like, <laughs> this is the time. Yeah, he's going to be just beat. Yeah, Ember Spirit just pushing out this mid lane. Look how far he's able to go yeah, just the with the whole remnant. Mump. He's just firing a remnant really close to his base, farming a creep wave, getting away. It's making it really difficult. It's pushing IG back into their base. YYF, he's actually quite tanky. He does have a Black King bar of his own. He has a Sanj, which allows you to maim, which kind of slows them down. It's like, you know, like breaking the leg at the knee. Uh, you don't break like your leg. <laughs> you just kind of like cut the tendon. Yeah, it's you, still nice. you, you slow them down yes. in one way Come or another. On. Okay. It's called hobbling. <laughs> you hobble okay. them, <laughs> and so you slow them down. And for and there's it's like a percentage chance, but it gives you HP as well, which is the big thing that YYF needs. He needs to do what the Viper's been doing. He wants to get up in the middle of the fight, get up in the mix of things. You want people to target you, but LGD have done a fantastic job of ignoring him, going for the rest of his team, and then trying to isolate them. And LGD. They're actually completely aware of what's going oh. on. I think they're hiding in these trees right now. Yeah. IG's pushing quite far up. LGD just going to disengage for a little bit. Fighting around the Roshan. At this point in the game, an extra life that the Aegis of the Immortal oh, gives you huge. is so huge. I mean, so neither team wants to give it up. Yeah. Imagine that avoid, but they have to duck everything to kill him once. So, and he comes back full health, full mana, ready to rock him. So what Yeo actually did was he puts his spirit in the Roshan pit and then goes to farm top. So even in the in the game they won with, uh, IG won with Invoker, with uh, XI playing it, they were split pushing constantly and constantly pressuring lanes. But because of the maneuverability and the mobility of, uh, of Ember Spirit, they're not able to do that. And he can be back to the fight in an instant. Yeah. Chuan, unable to do anything. This is where we talked about the weakness of Skyrath. If you're not actually being on the offensive and you're ahead, the hero just like starts to fall off really hard. I tell you what happened with my sister and Chuan. What happened? He kind of looks like me, and so I called my he sister. He doesn't look like me. And I said, I'm he in the player lounge. 
and he was like sitting in his seat and my sister thought it was me so she pokes him in the side really hard and says you know like the gotcha thing and she hugs him and then he like turns around and I'm like sitting in the corner like way far away like watching this all unfold and she looks super embarrassed oh. and she's like I'm so sorry oh, this and happens eyes, all the time yeah and his eyes just like fall over my sister like the Did entire we way through this is gonna be oh, big this is the fight they, 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 they get oh my god oh they're gonna, re they're gonna turn it around on him Radiant They're gonna try and engage, tower, I don't think. But they've attack. used two big ulties now. This yeah. is LG's time. Yeah, they've used the Stampede. It's on complete cooldown for now. They're just gonna back off. Maybe they're gonna bait them in. Give them the old bait and switch. The hop the la. It's a short cooldown though. 44 seconds on the Stampede. But IG might think Morana they can cross huge. the river. See if they can do Radiance something. top tower is under attack. It actually looks like both teams are just kind of posturing. Neither yeah. of them want to get caught out at this point. IG know that if they if they were to lose a full man team wipe at this point in the game, that's going to be really difficult for them to come back because they would surrender the Roshan as well. Yeah. And it looks like they're grouped up for it as well. It's all down to Chuan. He's bought an item called the Force Stuff, which allows him to push his teammates or push an enemy. And basically, the Centaur is going to blink on top of one of his teammates, and he's going to Force Staff them away so he can't do enough damage to him. Yeah, and he has to stay alive. Being able to cast the Mystic Flare and the Ancient Seal is going to be so huge just for damage. IG, that's what they really lack right now. And he's one of their primary damage dealers. And a mid, YYF gets snubbed up on the, on the Bristleback. They're going to go all in for him. Void walks in. Who's he going to go for? Doesn't find a Chronosphere target. LGD and IG both disengaging, not sure who to go on, and finally decides to throw for the again. Viper again. And actually, the Ventral Spirit Swap is there. Viper doing so much damage. The Faceless Void oh. is gonna go down, and IG is on the retreat. Two heroes down for them, three, they get four, and Fate, Chuan is the only one left alive, and that's not a big hero. LGD, five heroes alive. They're gonna walk into this Roshan pit and get a free Roshan. Absolutely huge. Four for zero trade, and they're gonna get the Roshan. They went on the Viper again, and then Vengeful Spear was ready with that Nether Swap, just completely turned around. No, even waited. He lived as well. Yeah, he did. It's crazy. And Marana, meanwhile, was just the standing there, the plinking the away. Oh, this is a really play. good game at Yeah, this is fantastic. I'm, uh, I... Uh, I'm blown away because Ferrari's usually better at making decisions Radiant's like that, middle but he, it looked like he was attack. confused. LGD spaced themselves perfectly. Yeah, yeah. In the heat of battle, most of the time when that happens, you're you're thinking to yourself, you don't recognize where your teammates are. You're just going for a target. You're just Radiant's you're kind of one track mind and tunnel attack. vision. But LGD, they split up perfectly, yeah. and you notice the hesitation from in, and indecision from Ferrari that entire way through. If you actually, sorry, Shane. At first, I thought they Radiant's made a mistake. They, they, they went on the Bristleback first, yeah. and I thought, oh, this is going to be. Disaster Radiant's for LGD. Tower He's the fallen. last one you want to go on. Similarly, you don't want you don't want IG to go on Viper. You don't want LGD to go on Bristol. Those are their two big tanky heroes. So, you know, they're the hardest to kill. But that swap was perfectly timed. The bench didn't even die. Unbelievable. If you actually watch the replay, you can uh, you can rewind, can't you? Live. I'm pretty sure you can. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So you can rewind live. And if you watch the mini map, uh, you watch all the X's, which are the yeah. player players. They actually are just like split up like, each other, like some sort of Radiant's really good discipline. Yeah. Some sort of delta, delta Almost unit. Like delta I was going to say formation some... Formation split? I don't know if there's yeah, a... I don't know if split's gooses. the right word. Maybe... Uh, diverting? I... The delta diver. Oh, okay. The delta diver. That's what we call it in the Dota scene, but... <laughs> LGD, I mean... They've just been dominant in these yeah. team fights. The splits from them have been amazing. Just the Yao being able to survive the in every one splits. of these fights. Yeah, we talked about we talked about Ember <laughs> Spirit. Splits, I <laughs> the Ember Spirit's really not tanky. That's what Shane said. You know. Are you familiar with bananas, by the way? I'm not sure if you. No, did no. I tell you my story? Yes, yes. I did. That's yeah. why I'm rubbing it in. Yeah, I don't. I don't really. I've only had it Salt once. In the I'm not a. You know why I knew I didn't like bananas? You know those runts, those candies that like. Runts. They have, yeah, they have like different kinds of fruits. And then they, oh, they're like hard candies. About. I used to have what? those. The banana was always the most disgusting. Uh, banana, when it comes to sweets, generally the banana is one you don't want. In my yeah. But DD playing absolutely fantastically all of these games. Yao only dying once on the Ember Spirit. Somehow he's managed not to get chronoed at any point. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been really good. Impressive. He's got a lot of stuff now too. Yeah, look at this Centaur. He's actually become even more tanky than this Viper somehow. He's, he's got 2,500 health. Look at she, he's just picked up a Scythe of Vice. Okay. Radiant's yeah, we haven't actually seen this item in attack. any of the games so far. If you just want to give it a quick run through. Sure. Basically, if you can imagine a stun that rather than hold someone in place, it actually turns them into, I believe, a harmless critter, it says. What is it, Ted? What is it? A pig. Yes. It's a pig. Uh, it's a pig. Uh, is a pig a critter? Bottom tower oh, no. I don't know it's like a piglet. 
It's a yeah, it's a piglet, but even then, that's not a crit. No, it's not a crit. A crit is more like a mouse or yeah. or a, a, a scurrying a, creature. A rap I don't know, man. It. Semantics. It's not. That's not semantics. Semantics. No, that's, that's, not what semantics. I, that's what I say when. Yeah, you do. Semantics. I had an so. argument with a guy in a computer shop one time about that. He gave me an example of something. Oh, I, wait, wait, very quick. Okay. I told him why his example was wrong, and he went, I'm not going to argue semantics with you. <laughs> but I was like, but you just gave me a dumb example. That's a definition of... Ugh, so frustrating. Easy, Tiger. I know it just kind of pisses Ted I'll off. I'll never so. go in there again. That's for local shop. What I was the name of it? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm going to get sued. But that guy's a knob. So LGD pushing out this lane. They've taken all the outer towers out, and IG are being starved out. And normally at this point in the game, you kind of start seeing uh, them play a little bit more aggressively to get back into the game. But this is their tournament life on the line. If they lose this game, they're actually eliminated from the TI4 main event. And that's such a big deal, just in terms of the prize money and the prestige. IG, this was a team that was meant to go far. LGD, a team that looked incredibly shaky. Yeah. They didn't win a single game on the it's first day until yet, they played Aero Gaming. Also, bear in mind that if IG go out, that's the three former TI winners out Oh my god, two. yeah. I never thought about it like that, yeah. Look yeah. at the uh, item that Long DD has got. He's got a Heaven's Halberd. Basically, it's an activatable item that you can use on an enemy. Long DD? No, did I? You did yeah. say Long DD. I might be a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> LGD DD playing Vengeful Spirit. So he's good. The Heaven's Harbor basically lets you disarm an opponent so they can't attack physically and also gives you a bit of evasion so it's actually harder to attack you as well. It's kind of, it's a really, and it gives is you a lot, interesting. He gives you a lot of health as well. Yeah, the fact that he's a support hero and he's able to get an item like this, this is going to help so much, especially since the Faceless Void, he doesn't have the Black King bar. And so if DD actually stands outside, manages to have his halberd the Faceless Void, he's not going to be able to hit it in yeah. his own Chronosphere. And even the Bristleback, who relies on that kind of physical damage. Can you just click on the Vengeful Spirit for a second? Shane, doesn't that look like Elia? Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> it's a girl we know, she looks exactly like that. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> LGD pushing in right now. Not a lot of towers being, tower damage being done. I think they're just a little bit afraid of getting engaged upon and actually this, uh, this Ember Spirit, just incredible bottom on him so far. He's able to one shot the free wave and actually they're gonna go on here. He does have the Aegis of the Immortal though. It's gonna pop and rev it with the counter initiation. Roy taking a lot of damage. He's getting quite low. Instantly blows up and YYF now he's on the run but the entire LGD squad there to back it up and the Yao just doing tons of damage and he goes down for 3-2 which was once a tanky hero not so much anymore. Ember Spirit just doing tons of damage not sure why they decided to engage upon him. That's why the Aegis of the Immortal is so big. He was able to revive. They weren't losing anything and two core heroes go down for IG. Did you see the patience they used with the stuns? Basically Ferrari could have got that Chronosphere off but because they used their stuns so effectively the that... Timing on yeah. the timing the, the Eventual spirit stun there was what won that fight. It really Absolutely. was. Absolutely. You know the, the the power of Viper's ultimate here. When we were talking about magic immunity and things, saw the first fact that used his BKB. He was immune to magical work. stuns, but Viper's ultimate that Viper strike goes through BKB. He was still slowed, and they were able to catch him. Because sometimes Bristleback can kite your team all around the map, exactly, charging yeah. after him with his back to you. He's taking very little damage. That's why Viper was such a great pick in this game. He has this pirate now as well on Centaur. Yeah, God, so, so Centaur's third spell is return. So it basically does a percentage of your your, bait, your your strength as damage back to the enemy that attacks him. And he has a lot of strength. Yeah, yes. him and Viper both do. So who is Ferrari even going to go on the void? Unsure what to do. He's going to get slowed up by the Viper Strike. The Viper taking some damage, but look at that. The Centaur and the Viper are just up in front. They want the Void to go on with them, but the Chronosphere, the arrow connects as well. Now comes the, uh, the Chronosphere from the Void. Lots of damage though, being done to Ferrari. He's gonna go down, and still, both tanks are still alive for LGD. Ember Spirit at full HP. He's gonna go in, not really caring who he goes for. Faith is gonna fall as well. That's three heroes down now for LG, for IG and LGD. They're still alive. All five of them are still pushing up here. They can go back if they want to, but three heroes are down for IG now. Venge with the swap again. Amazing. The, the supports have been the story of these games, as good as everybody else has played. I, I mean, Yao's been fantastic. He's been so disciplined. He hasn't got caught in Chronospheres once. Radiant's He's always there on point with the damage. Attack. I mean, once the tanks Dyer's have done their job, they've soaked attack. up the pressure. Everybody's blasted this spell trying to take him down. In comes Yao, clean up crew, double kill, but these swaps from DD. And the in game two, was trying on the Mirana that won the game. I think DD's been absolutely phenomenal on the bench in this game.
Yeah, and as we talked about Rabbit, he played a lot more tentatively in this game on the Centaur. Yeah. But he farmed a lot more he too than Lin did. Look at this return damage. The tail actually takes place. It's like, yeah, it takes like 10% of the first and then Yeah, the items he was able to farm are... We strong. probably won't see IG call GG in this game because it is their elimination game. You don't want to give up early. You want to fight until the last. You have to hope that LTD will make some kind of a mistake. But uh, from the way they've been playing, I'm not sure they will. Ferrari doesn't have Chronosphere for 20 more seconds. They're going to lose two full lanes of racks. That means they're creeps. If you look at mid lane here, Blitz, have a look how much bigger the mega melee creeps now. Look at these lads. They need business. 50 damage each. Compare that with like 26. It's creeps. double. Yeah. And, and so, they give less money. So yeah. when IG are farming them, you can see they look plus 19, plus 20. It's normally in the 30s. And actually, Lin is just getting tankier and tankier. If you looked at their <laughs> HP after like the disengagement happened, they were all at full health again. Yeah. And that's the problem with fighting against LGD's lineup at this point. They've got one major damage dealer, and the other two just kind of walk forward and say, okay, go for us, go for us, like, hey, over here. And Ferrari playing the Void, he doesn't really know what to do because yeah. the Ember Spirit is way too far back. That's who he wants to go on. But for him to have an effective promo spirit, too much has to go right. He has to catch the, the uh, Vengeful Spirit, and he has to catch the Ember Spirit, but he's unable to do either. And look at his items. I mean, he's got a Maelstrom, so he does a bit of extra damage. He's been working on his BKB for what feels like forever, uh, but he's still only got 1,400 yeah, health. It's not great. I'm... And as I think, Shane, that was the best point you made, was about the fact that Bristleback really worked with Chronosphere. No, Spirit. it doesn't. And his whole thing is... This is the one thing we haven't talked about with, with Bristleback, is his ultimate warpath. When he casts spells, you'll see his damage going up. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, they've got Chi. Chi, he's invisible. Does he do they see them? Yes, he's going to go down for sure. So as Bristleback casts spells, quills, or snotting on people, it's actually called Vicious Nasal Goo, but whatever. As he does that, he gets these stacks of warpaths. His base attack becomes more powerful. What he wants to do is be right in amongst it, fighting, rocking and rolling, but Ferrari drops the Chronosphere, and all of a sudden, all the focus becomes about that. He doesn't get the chance to do his thing. And after they go on them, after they use the Chronosphere, they just walk away and the Heart of Tarras lets you regenerate a percentage of your HP back. So what you is just Rabbit walk. doing? He's actually he's just he's messing around. Thing. He can feel it. He yeah. knows this game is in their hands. All they have to do is take this last lane of racks down. Radiance I think the percentage of games won. Look at the dumb. competitive gaming is 1% after you've taken all the racks. Wow. One, so one, one yeah. percent. Of one percent to come back. The idea of coming back. It should be less. No. It probably should be. I don't think I've ever seen no. a top Radiant's game like this come back from uh, being down. What they call mega creeped. It's when all the enemy ranks are down. Your creeps get even more powerful. It's a game-ending mechanic. Why? Why? Absolutely. Importance. And Chronos Spin doesn't catch Chronos anybody. Oh Brilliant dodge, but Ferrari's gonna get oh absolutely God. punched to pieces. GG caught by fate. LTD are through. I cheer out. I can't believe it. Oh my God. All three. Radiant. Unbelievable. That's insane. Three reigning former champions of the International have gone out by day two. Alliance didn't even get here. Na'Vi went out this morning. IG have gone out this Holy afternoon. Crap. Incredible. Okay. They look really happy. No, they don't at all. Look at LGD. He smiled briefly. They, they haven't won yet. Yeah. That's focus here. So you don't celebrate now. They want to go further. So Let's LGD go, does it with an absolute precision execution. Oh, look at IG. These lads are crazy.